And we are back. It's me, Uncle Nabil, a.k.a. Big Bad Billy, a.k.a. Kung Fu Billy, a.k.a. Kung Fu Grizzly. In Taiwan, they call me Hung Lo, and in mainland China, they call me Wang Too Long. And I'm back today discussing the news. Today, Richie Rich, a.k.a. Rishi Sunak, very, very amazing man. He left the D-Day gathering to do an important interview to tell us all about the sacrifices sacrifice, sacrifices that this guy has made amazing he, he told us how he sacrificed many things many things like sky in, in a recession in, 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 in austerity in this in these hard times my guy you're talking to me about sky sky like this is how tone deaf this was and it was so hard growing up when we flogged the butler, I was only allowed to give him three lashes instead of five. And I wasn't given the freshest of caviar. I had to eat it out of a tin. <laughs> I bought milk from a bottle. I couldn't get it fresh from a goat's teeth like Mane used to get it. <laughs> My life was so hard. Butler, fetch me a tissue. I'm making eye water again. Fuck, I, seriously, that's, that's who's ruling us? Listen, let me tell you something, Rishi. The only thing Rishi ever sacrificed was the Royal Bank of Scotland, right? <laughs> and guess who paid for that sacrifice? And guess who made money from it? Rishi. <laughs> Not having Sky growing up doesn't mean that you were poor or you struggled. It just means you had ethnic parents. You're Indian and Nigerian. Our parents took joy in, in making us not have certain things that they could afford just because they didn't want us to have too much joy growing up. Read your books. Read your books. Eh? Every patient does it. Indian, Nigerian, all ethnic parents do this. I don't know why. Eh, in my day, when I used to go to school, I had to fight a lion. And the lion's name was Fred. He had a brother named Felix. I had to climb uphill to go to school and uphill to come back home. Are you asking me about Sky? My friend, shut up there. What you sacrifice is our youth future. What you sacrifice is our economy. What you sacrifice is democracy. Because how did you even become the prime minister? And then this mommy waste man, K. Starmer, he reminds me of that kid in class that tells everyone what the other kid is doing. <laughs> look, look, he farted in class, but I didn't. <laughs> yes, he ran away on D-Day, but I didn't. I, I was there. I don't know. Is there anything K. Starmer says that isn't based off of something that Tory did first? Does he have a personality at all? Or is he just some kind of human reaction to anything that Tories do? What thing does he have that he stands on? What principle does he have that he stands on as a person himself? This guy could probably become the Prime Minister tomorrow and then just sit down and do nothing. But that being said, it would probably be better than what we have now, so yeah. So, Donald Trump found guilty on everything, basically. Gotcha, bitch! And guess what? He's probably still not going to jail because he's Donald Trump, bitch. Now, this guy cannot be stopped. Donald Trump got found guilty on all these charges and, of course, the right-wing QAnon and, and just about every other group that doesn't believe COVID is real came out and, and said it's some kind of conspiracy. It's a conspiracy of the deep state to bring down a great man. But at the end of the day, it's interesting because when Hunter Biden got found guilty, it's, oh, it's a conspiracy to make us think that the courts are fair. Everything's a conspiracy with these people. It doesn't matter what you say, they go and answer. I like the vortex that these guys live in. I mean, also, it's pretty interesting that Hunter Biden is on crack because that now explains why Joe Biden gave out crack pipes when he first became president of America. But, I mean, with, with Donald Trump, I must say, having Stormy Daniels down as an expense is gangster. Thing is, it's not affected his popularity at all. Um, as you know, Uncle Nabil is a big UFC fan, and the most recent big UFC card featured Donald Trump as a guest, and this guy walked into an arena full of people and got a standing ovation. You can't keep a bad man down. And in another classic case of don't kick a man when he's down, remember when Tyson Fury mocked and encouraged his fans to mock Anthony Joshua for his emotional breakdown in the ring after he lost to Usyk twice? Well, the thing about Nemesis is it never misses. Ooh, I like that. That's bars. Mashallah, brother. Sensational. No, but seriously, be careful what you say. When you see people down, when you see people have trouble in their lives, be very, very careful when you laugh at them because you never know. You might be in the same position. We've seen footage now of Tyson Fury stumbling and wobbling in a bar and then later him on his hands and knees 
crawling because he's been plastered. Now keep in mind, this is a six foot nine man who diets to weigh 27 stone. Do you understand how much beer that guy had to drink to get in that state? That guy literally drank the River Thames worth of beer, right? That is how he's getting over his loss. He's clearly a broken man. But the biggest irony is he was still more stable on his feet in that bar after all that beer than he was in round nine against Usyk. <laughs> Happy New Year! Multiple festivals now are facing boycotts. The most recent one, I believe, is the Latitude Festival. Several performers, like Sophie Duca, for example, have made public statements discussing how they are boycotting because of the festival's ties with investors and, and companies that are riding or helping with the current situation in Gaza. There's no jokes to be made about this. You can't promote something like art. Which, which is linked to freedom when you are backing an organization that helps to fund a war where free speakers are targeted. Um, journalists, artists of all sorts have met untimely deaths. Let's not forget that even before this you know, current situation we have in Gaza, Shirin Abu Akhle was targeted and murdered by this same regime. I myself was involved in a little back and forth over the weekend with somebody that told me that yes sure one of these companies invests in genocide but they also invest in electric cars which leads to the death of children in congo so that makes them good there's no reasoning with some of these people man there's absolutely no reasoning so nigel farage is on his campaign and um, first he had like a milkshake thrown at him ladies and gentlemen we got him by an only hands model <laughs> model you know like how i'm an instagram philosopher there's rumors that she's a part of his campaign and then afterwards while uh, sitting on uh, this open top boss doing his campaign a guy who i'm not gonna lie brought back memories of my childhood in nigeria because you know growing up throwing stones at people was one of my favorite pastimes as with most healthy nigerian kids with a good aim and i think he caught him square on the chest with the first rock he, he came prepared he was stationed with a bucket full because he knew he might miss one or two but god damn it he wasn't going to miss the third he's now been charged with threatening behavior how is that threatening behavior he didn't threaten to throw a rock at nigel farage he threw a rock at nigel farage how is that the law doesn't make any sense at this point he's gonna have to roll around with a screen like the pope used to but of course it has to be made in england which means it will probably shatter on impact his milkshake brings all the boys to the yard with rocks hilarious <laughs> influencer online comedian you name it nico milana who did very well in, in elections in 2021. I think he came 50. He, he beat UKIP, which, to be honest, is like taking candy from a baby at this point. He beat Lawrence Fox, who I also beat on Twitter. Fuck you, Lawrence. Guy tried to tell me that I don't have any talent. These times he auditioned to play himself in a film and still didn't get the role. <laughs> Prick. He's contesting elections in 11 constituencies. And Popo, as usual, trying to ruin the parade and say, oh, he shouldn't do this because, you know, what if he wins in all 11? Which would be hilarious if he did because he could then declare himself an emperor or something. That would be awesome. But here's the thing. Um, we don't know if he himself is doing it or maybe it's one of those Spartacus things where it's a whole bunch of people saying, I am Nico, I am Nico, I am Nico, I am Nico. I'm Spartacus! I am Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus! And once again, you know who are butthurt because a girl is the main protagonist of the new Star Wars series, Acolyte. For some strange reason, she keeps getting a bunch of shit. And I'm not quite sure what that is. Hmm. I, I just find that it's ironic how a show that has featured green people who talk backwards, people with seven eyes, giant heads, green skin, and still the thing that people find most offensive is a person with black skin. Like, come on, guys. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that half of sci-fi fans are a bunch of 4chan dwelling incels. Hmm. 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 I sense major butthurt in the force. Much worse. The, we should never yeah, see it. And um, guys, I don't know when this video is going to be out, but wherever you're seeing this, Eid Mubarak, wherever you are from Nigeria to Pakistan, 
to Australia, to Morocco, wherever you are, man, Eid Mubarak, and please, um, as you celebrate with your families, uh, pray and, and, and um, keep in mind all our brothers and sisters around the world who are not having the good time that we are having. Please keep in your prayers, our brothers and sisters in the West Bank, in Gaza, in Tigray, Ethiopia, in Rohingya, Burma, in Kashmir, uh, across Africa, in like Nigeria, Somalia, Sudan. Please keep them in your prayers. And once again, to you and all your families, Eid Mubarak. May Allah answer your prayers.